Greetings, citizens of the internet. I'm Static Buzz, and with me is Oz. How are you guys doing today? Oz, how you doing over there? Uh, other side doing of good. Phoenix, I guess. Are you in? Is that Phoenix you're in, or are you out on the outskirts? I am in the outskirts, Buckeye. So if you get on the I-10 and drive towards LA, you'll see the signs for Buckeye. It's not far <laughs> from you. <laughs> not far from me. Yeah, I we I went over to your house the other day. It was uh, maybe like uh, thirty minutes, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah. So, all right. But anyways, this is episode three of Gaming Watch Weekly. We do this every week. We release on Mondays, and this is for July fifteenth, twenty nineteen. We're constantly making improvements. The video behind us is a little changed. And that'll there's gonna be iterations of things that we do to improve the show. But for now, let's get into the news for of the week. Uh, I guess the major, major announcement was uh, the Nintendo Switch Lite. It releases yeah. um, November 8th. It's going to be priced at uh, $199.99, which is compared to the regular Switch at $299.99. Um, the main thing is the Switch Lite doesn't have removable Joy-Cons. It does not support dock mode, and it also only works with games that support handheld unless you have controllers outside of that that you can Correct. use Correct. so um, does this mean they're killing you had a little note doesn't mean they're killing off the 3ds we'll get into that what are your thoughts on the the switch light though uh, so I don't have one thought about getting one I like the price point but I want to be able to dock it and I want to be able to take off the joy cons so it's like but the main reason why I was getting it was for travel. So do I just go, well, you know, stick with the light. Um, it does have a slightly smaller screen, uh, you know, and that doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. Um, the play, the it's got the 32 gigs of memory and the battery life is what, 3.7 hours. So that's actually pretty good depending on play time. Yeah, they I, said they I, improved the battle, the yeah. battle, the battery time, not the battle yeah. time, the battery time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think it's a good move. Um, I just wish you could dock it and remove the Joy-Cons. And I think this might spell the death to the 3DS. I, you know, I'm still, I don't know. I mean, they'll continue to support the one that's currently, you know, the newest on the market. But I think they're eventually going to taper off the games and then push towards the Switch. Well, I, I th platforms to support. I think that's inevitable, but if you think about how many 3DSs and 2DSs there are in the wild, mm -hmm. them not supporting that would be a waste of money. I mean, they just won't do that. There's too many out there. They're, uh, what do they call it, customer base or whatever you want to call that is well, too large. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say they're just going to, as soon as the DS releases, they're going to, you know, bring down the cleaver. I'm just saying eventually they're going to, they're still going to leave the customer support behind it. You know, it's like old Microsoft. You're, you're still going to support the old stuff for a while. Yeah. And then eventually you're going to gradually go, okay, well, you've had four years now to save up your pennies, nickels, <laughs> and dimes to move to the, the new mm. platform. And at that time, I'm thinking they're going to stop making games for the DS to kind of push you over to the the new switch light well with the price point being 199.99 i vaguely remember buying the larger 3ds when i finally dove into the 3ds and i i think that was around the price that i paid for that uh yeah when i got my ds which was a long time ago it, that was about right yeah so i mean you you you're probably right in the long term they'll probably kill off the the 3ds but for now i think they're still got a couple years support i mean they're just releasing games last month oh, yeah. or was it the month before persona q2 just released and there's mm -hmm. there's been other games that have released just for the 3ds recently so i think it's yeah. still got a life but yeah it'll probably trickle out probably oh yeah trickle I, out. i'm not saying they're gonna kill it today they've no. got a couple of years before the, the, i think they dropped the, the cleaver on it but yeah that's just natural progression i mean eventually they're gonna push you to the new, new one. to the new stuff you know i mean they still might release security patches you know like oh I keep it from getting hacked but um i think it'll you know. depend on how the lights the light does if the light does really really well then it, it could take over but i think the light's gonna do well honestly i mean it's gonna they 
it fits that handheld market which the switch held it's just some people didn't have didn't want like that price point uh, of the you know the 299 and then you know tax all of that other stuff and then you're looking at you know three hundred dollar system still so, cheaper than a regular console though. i think this will put it right where it needs to be and i think it'll do well honestly because it's going to support regular switch games so i mean as long as they support handheld mode that's the thing you have to, it has to support handheld mode which because the joy cons have the x axis eight axis you know motion control stuff so if the game supports that you won't be able to play that sh or if it only supports that you won't be able to strictly play it on your light without another controller yes and the light doesn't come with a kickstand so you're gonna have to buy something to put it in mm -hmm. so that you could ho hold a controller because you're not going to be holding it so yeah there's going to be that going on uh, there was another thing that uh i heard some people talking about nintendo also i don't know if they did this or they're going to do this they're allowing you to have a primary and a secondary switch. The primary will not require a internet connection to play your games if they're digitally mm -hmm. downloaded. Yep. The secondary will require a to be online to play any digital games. So okay. you can effectively have two systems, like one in the dock, and make that your secondary because that's always going to be plugged into the internet. And Correct. then your light would be your primary, and then you can play your games on both. Yes, it will but, allow you to, the mobility. But that's only for people that want to get both. I have a Switch, and I'm not sure I'm going to get a light. Uh, I don't travel that much, so there's really not a need for it. Unless yeah. things change, so you know we could be going to conventions and stuff moving forward, because that's something uh, we want to start doing, but uh, yes. we're ways off of that. Yeah, that's maybe a year or two down the road once we get our uh, viewership up, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. We got plans. We got plans. Yes, got plans for down the road. <laughs> hopefully this can grow into something. This is what That's the goal. <laughs> so uh, more on the Nintendo news. We got a, kind of a Pokemon Sword and Shield controversy. It's been ongoing for a couple weeks now. Mm -hmm. So... When E3 came and Nintendo had its treehouse, they announced that it was either then or before that that you were gonna they were changing the way that they transferred Pokemon and they were gonna introduce this new system for Pokemon Sword and Shield, and you would be able to transfer your Pokemon into the you know Sword and Shield. The problem is, is they came out after the fact and said you will not be able to move all your Pokemon over to Sword and Shield. And there was kind of a controversy, like, why can't I move all my Pokemon? I can do it in all the other games and blah, 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 blah. The reason why is because they are not reusing assets from previous games. So they can't just copy it over and use them. They're recreating every Pokemon from mm -hmm. scratch. Yes. And that is a lot of work. Oh, a lot. So. A lot. But yeah, it's they, Nintendo, so you know they have the resources. <laughs> they do, but there's 807 Pokemon. Could you imagine yeah. like redrawing those in 3D, animating them, and then yeah. rendering them, and then also adding their moves on top of that? So that's yeah. that's that's a lot of work for 807 Pokemon. Jeez. Yes, that's, that's a lot. I mean, but you know, um, my thing is, it's like if you're gonna release it, try to. Um, include those those uh, assets into the game just because I mean face it people want access to all of them so uh, I mean if you work hard to level them up and all that and then it's like okay I, I got the new one but I can only import you know Pikachu and Squirtle then I'm kind of upset because I have all of these other ones that I, I haven't that I can't move over that I've worked on so I can understand the frustration well I I understand where you're coming from but you also have to understand that at level one as a Pokemon trainer and you had a 99 Pikachu you would be able to use him you would you would have to get to a level that's comparable to be able to <laughs> use that Pokemon so you're still gonna have to build up other Pokemon to be able to get to those so should. Like any good trainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand. I got some Pokemon that I really like, and I wouldn't mind using them. And I haven't fully built them up, so I would like to bring them in and finish that. I don't know if I'll be able to. Yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know how many they're going to have in the new game. I don't know if they've announced a number. So uh, I, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Again, yeah, I hope they. I hope they can eventually get all eight hundred <laughs> in, in there, but it'll it'll take a while. But. Well, I mean, imagine if it's only like two hundred and they're you're missing six hundred. That's that's quite a that's a, that's yeah, a lot. That's a substantial amount that you're that missing is... that have a huge. I mean, they all have a story behind them. You know, it, it's it's it would be like releasing a. Uh, half created Assassin's Creed or Fallout, you know, it's like you gotta get all that story in there, so <laughs> do it to it. Come on, <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, uh it's gonna be interesting to see where that goes and see if they actually bring them in after the fact. Yeah. But they're not so. saying they're gonna be bringing any in after the fact, so it's kind of eh, we'll have to see. Uh, well, you know, the uh customers will I think eventually end up dictating that a little bit, so if it sells well. If it doesn't yeah. sell well they're gonna be like, Ah, oh, you hundred thousand people go away. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean you know, if you're not buying them then go away. But yeah. <laughs> you know. I think it'll sell a lot better than that. I think it'll be in the millions after the first weekend, but that's just my opinion. Probably. It's Pokemon, so of course <laughs> it'll sell. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see if uh they uh sell more switches with that and I, i've also heard that they're oh, supposed to have a nintendo uh switch light version a pokemon switch light version when uh, pokemon comes out which i think the date that pokemon sword and shield comes out coincides with the date that the the light comes out but i'm not positive we'll have to check on that yeah so all right so the next story and i know i you you probably didn't know anything about this because you're it's a kind of an odd one but uh there's an upcoming dark picture game called man of me medan medan it's m-e-d-a-n and it comes out august 30th and it's made by supermassive games and they're pretty well known for story driven games but this one is a horror game and they're saying that's going to be the first of eight planned games oh okay. so it could be pretty cool and another thing Another reason why I'm kind of looking at this is they have an online co-op feature. Nice. So you could, <laughs> so we could play a horror game together and you know, record it and see who gets scared more often. Okay, hey, I'm <laughs> all about that. My Turn money's on lights and let's go. My money's <laughs> on you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> then again, maybe not. Maybe not. You have seen combat, so uh, I don't I know. I have, I have, and that's why I'm a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> to say, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I won't go into that. that. I don't take my meds no more. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next uh, story that we had for the week was uh, Ubisoft uh, has some bans in regards to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yes. That's kind of a clickbait title, but I had to put it in like that. Uh, so recently... Ubisoft released the Quest Maker utility for Odyssey for the Odyssey community to use. Some creators mm -hmm. use it to make easy XP quests to help up uh, help with leveling. So they were like given like these easy quests that you had to go talk to somebody and come back and it would or whatever, and you were getting like huge amounts of experience. And Ubisoft was like, nope, nope, we're banning those quests. Yeah, and they, as they should. Um... So, there's always going to be somebody who's going to abuse a good system like that, but um, they should ban those that that type of stuff. That that's uh, counterproductive to the game. It's not what you want um, for the community. You know, it's Assassin's Creed. You know, work at it. You know, eventually you're going to get to the level you want. And as is, you should play the story. So you don't need to be. You know, doing the quest, run over here, talk to this person, and then run back, turn it in, and then, you know, ding a bunch of levels. That's just not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, so. I, I get you there, but then there's also the part where Ubisoft has a boost for XP, money, and material that you can buy. But that's like, mm, that's just currency and material. You no, know? they have an um, XP one too, though. Well... Well, Ubisoft does that in all games. So, like in um, uh, Ghost Recon, there were XP packs, but they, I mean they only lasted for, you know, a couple were three hours, a couple six, and a couple twelve. So, I mean, oh no, these ones in Odyssey are permanent. You buy them once and you have them the whole game. Well, okay, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I guess you know, I, I don't really look at that stuff because it's like, well. I'm a gamer at heart, so I'm going to work. I mean, if I want something, I'm going to, you know, 
work at it, especially level wise. Now, if there's a cool pack out, you know, if it's, you know, like the one where he's got, you know, burnt armor and there's lava and whatnot, I'll buy that because that's cool, you know, because it's handy. <laughs> but it didn't affect me in any way. I mean, it gave you a weapon, but you still had to upgrade the weapon if you wanted to continue using it if you out out leveled it but right uh, the bonuses i could kind of understand just due to you know you don't need people really don't need those if you really love the game just play it you know um yeah i i'm just bringing up that a lot of people were upset because they had those in there and then they were taking away people's abilities now i personally don't agree and that's mainly because you know if you really want to speed up your xp gain just yeah. go download a trainer, right? Yeah. I did a mm-hmm. quick search and it showed quite a few of them out there. there there's, there's trainers out there that you can, if you want quick experience, just do that and be done with it. Yep. So yeah. Yeah, there there are ways around it. <laughs> <You> know, <so. laughs> there are always is ways around it, especially on the True. PC, right? Yes. It's more difficult on uh, consoles, but it still could be done. Yeah. True. I mean, if there's will, there's a way. <laughs> All right. So you put in here that a rumor has it that a PC gamer put out an article saying that they heard a rumor that Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell are coming to VR. What's that about? So um, I guess Facebook was on the prowl for a studio, and according to some information, um, uh, they were trying to get people into VR and I guess some of the title uh, the two of the titles that, that people are mostly talking about was Assassin's Creed and uh, Splinter Cell playing as Sam Fisher so um, it's still just a r- rumor mill thing and now if I googled it I saw some you know rough play and it actually looked pretty good where you were sneaking around and one of the complaints that I mean like for you and me have had about VR is the games are short you know it's like nothing's really a long game so i think this could be that launch into making vr something fun (laughs) and draw people to (laughs) buying the you know buying the vr systems you know so um so quick question here is this new games or converting older games into vr well, right now it's just a, the, the the two that were brought up in the article I pulled up was just um, Assassin's Creed and um, Splinter Cell. So. Right, but are they going to be new games in those series, mm. or are they taking like Odyssey and making it? So VR? it might be its own. It might be its own game that yeah, I don't know if they're porting or not. That that it, the article did not say. So. So See, that would be the interesting thing. If they took, like, Odyssey or something, a world that's, like, that Im- immersive and put mm-hmm. you in it in VR, I could be there for weeks. I might forget to eat, you know what I mean? Yeah, people, <laughs> as I say, people will jack in and then forget to come out and it's like, forget to pay the bills and stuff. You plug know? me but, in! But it's, it's <laughs> I think, it, you know, if they really want VR to become this thing that they have preached it to be, you know, you're going to have to start doing stuff with it. Um I mean, the cool one to to see maybe in VR would be like, yeah, um, what was I thinking? Uh, other than like the Assassin's Creed, um, oh, I'll have to come back to it. But um, anything hacking wise, I think would be fun. Something Matrixy, Matrix-y. like Cyberpunk or something would be fun. Yeah, the problem with any of these games, especially open world games, is how do you do the movement? They haven't perfected that. In, yeah. in VR games that I've seen. I mean, the whole teleporting to a spot, that doesn't work for me. That does yeah. not work for me. And that's true, you know. So I still think we got a long ways to go, but, I mean, with, you know, the um, the ones that they got out there, the popular ones, like, what is it, the high? What, the one that you can get through Steam. <laughs> There's a, you know, the Vive. Yeah, that, yeah, the Hive. That one seems to be doing really well. Um, it's uh, Vive with a V. Oh, Vive, sorry. Yeah, that's right. V I V E, um, so yeah. yeah. There's the Vive. There's uh, the Oculus, which did the Quest recently, which is uh, it's you still got wires, but it's uh, its own thing that goes around your waist or something. I haven't really looked into it. Uh, I see a backpack so, one there. They yeah, that, I think that's the Quest. Yeah. So uh, just so you know, there there's a anime and a games series that came out called Sword Art Online. 
And the anime, basically, they jack in with this nerve gear into a game, and they're, like, in the game, and they feel and taste and smell everything. But what was what's cool is the same company that made the games mm -hmm. started making a VR game for it. And what they did for the movement is they had... I don't know if you remember the old arcade uh, VR sets where they had, like, the circular thing around that had the padding... Yep. They they had that, but at the feet, instead of it being flat, it was domed, or like a reverse dome. And you put these special booties on, and it sensed when oh. your feet moved in it. So yep. it was almost like a gerbil in a ball type of feel. <laughs> yes, I remember seeing that. But that was kind of cool. So if they could do something like that, and you know that would be cool. Or There's also technology out there most people don't realize that you can think and control things on a computer. And there have been people that have put that into games, and people have thought their way through games so if they can take that and put that into the movement for vr i think that would be a good mesh but i don't know if those two will ever come together and merge or or what mm -hmm. but that's the technology yeah. i'm looking for i want that i yeah. want to just be able to think and do that would be awesome that would be awesome i mean that's that's definitely futuristic where you could uh you definitely get lost in there people but how far away future, though? I want it next week, uh, you know? <laughs> I, I agree, but, I mean, it's – now you're talking about thinking it and doing it, so. Well, that's the best way, right? So yeah, you, I would who, agree. The quicker thinkers, you know, choo, 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 choo. who cares about your, your, your quick finger, you know, trigger finger? It's how quickly I can think to pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah, so – it's going to mm -hmm. come down to reactions, and i got some pretty good reactions. I'd like to see how I stack up. <laughs> Good, yeah. I, I, I hope it, it it does well. I mean, right now it's still a rumor, but you know, uh, hopefully it um, actually materializes. I just so. really hope on the VR front that it it lives long enough to become what we want it to. Because when it came out in the '80s, it was cool, and we were like, "Yes, this is this is the tech of the future." And then it faded away for twenty. Mm -hmm. 20 some odd years and now it's back I don't want to see it fade away again I haven't yeah. invested in any of the VR just because there's no games out there that really speak to me that you know, like we sure. were saying they're all, they feel like tech demos so yeah. once they start getting games Assassin's Creed Splinter Cell would be a good start mm -hmm. that I could dive into and be there and be immersed in the world I'm in I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> so Be Sam Fisher killing people. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Anyways, let's move on off of this sure. uh, VR stuff. And now this the next game would be really cool in VR. Uh, so there's a Title Five update is going live on July 23rd for the Division Two um, for early for access. Early access. Yep. Everybody else gets it on the 30s. What is early access? I didn't. You mean Early like PTR? Was, well, no, it was the people that bought the year pass and stuff like that. Oh, so, so if you bought the year pass, you'll have early access to it. People that just bought the straight game without any of the year pass stuff, it's they get that later. Okay, so this is the title updates that were included in the season pass mm -hmm. type stuff. Yeah. All right, yeah, you want to go over what we get? Yeah, sure. So much like the last time, we're getting... Um, two main missions which is the manning national zoo and then uh camp white oak so they're going to be like any other main mission uh it's just it's part of the expansion um what is it um a uh a new uh pve experience which is going to be um for operation dark hour they're releasing a um expedition yeah, expedition. Um, but then they're also doing for Operation Dark Hour. Or the expeditions are kind of like the underground from the first one. So at least that's how I've interpreted it. Um, so, but it's going out and you're going to be retrieving things. Um, now the discovery mode for Operation uh, Dark Hour, which we were confused about, like what is this discovery mode thing? It's more of a matchmaking. So they said they're going to kind of make it's not going to be as difficult as going into it normally. So kind of think of WoW and the LFR system. So um, and it's just going at it. Dark uh, Hour. That's the first raid. Operation Dark Hours. Was that yeah. the first raid? Okay, I just want I, yeah. I didn't yeah. know the name. No, of it. I, no. Her, rumor has it there's, they're working on another one, but um, yeah, they've announced that they're working on another one. I yeah. just didn't know the name of it was Operation Dark Hours. Um, so, but the. Um, 
people that when I was watching the state of the game were complaining about like the one of the exotics you have to run um, the raid eight times to get the eagle bear and now that they're saying we don't know if we're going to put the eagle bear in um, discovery mode there's still a question mark next to that I hope they do it, you know uh, it's you know I, I ran it you know I, I should have been if I run it eight times I should get the eagle bear but of course there are people out there like well you know get good get find some friends and do it and it's like well it's, in a game such as the division it's kind of hard to meet people when when you're running around you're running around in your own world you know you'd have to join a clan and clans are getting really selective now so um yeah just but, because uh, some people got have seven friends that they can do this with doesn't mean that other people should be locked out of yes and that's you know, my exotics. thought on it yeah but at so, the same time, if it's easier, that's the part that gets me. So even in like WoW, when you're doing the looking for raid, you're mm -hmm. not getting the – I'll just throw out these are not gear score numbers that are correct. But you're getting mm -hmm. the 500 gear because you're doing looking for raid, where if you did the actual normal raid, you're getting 520, say, right? So yeah, there so. should be some something in there like that to balance out the fact that you're doing oh, an yeah. easier mode. I would, I would agree to re, uh, releasing, you know, maybe it's not a, the the um, regular Eagle Bear, you know, it just, you know, make it to where it's, I mean, you can level up these things anyways. So, but, so I don't know why there's a, this big deal with it. Just give me a version that's not 500 and call it good. I, well, I, I, th I think where they messed up was they should have made the raid gear 510 or 520. And then that way, yes. anybody, when they release this, you get a 500 gear score Eagle Bear. But you still get an Eagle Bear, right? You still get a reward. So yeah, yeah. that's what they should have done. They kind of messed up by not doing that and making the gear score for the raid. Though those items are the same as anybody before they went in the raid. So yes. yeah, that's kind of where I think they goofed. Yeah. So I don't know. They're still ironing out all of that stuff, but I'm sure we'll hear more with the next state of the game. Uh, but going back to title update five, um, there's some classified assignments. So you're going to get the central aquarium and the NSA building. Um, B13. <laughs> so um, we don't know, but it's NSA. So, um, but it's going to be part released early with um, early access. What's um, a classified assignment? Are those those like. So there's those little blue. When you're running around, and you see the blue compasses on it. Those are classified assignments. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so they kind of have most classified assignments, if not all, have the backpack trophies and stuff on it. So. Um, yeah, that that's kind of the nice things about them. Plus, they they're small, short. Um, they have um, you know like cell phones in there that you can pick up that play, or you know that there's a, a, a the dialogue. Audio. Yeah, yeah, the audio stuff. So, um, and then um, two exotics, uh, gear balancing, new weapons, uh, skill builds, which people have wanted. Uh, and of course the lovely flashlight which I on your pistol yeah, yeah the pistol flashlight <laughs> and then they're gonna get release some crafting oh. so um, yeah, yeah I'm I'm of all the things you said from the videos I watched and I, I didn't watch the last state of the game I watched the one before that the okay. skill builds are what enticed me the most because mm -hmm. I oh, yeah. love dropping down a turret I love those type of things and just laying waste if they could beef those up and I could beef them up by putting skill, mm -hmm. making my gear have skill on it, whatever that stat is, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. down. I'm probably going to try that. I, so am I. I'll probably roll that as well. Um, so they were talking about the crafting. So, you know, you can craft uh, mods for your drone or whatnot. One of them was a certain type of gunpowder. So the drone is more of a nuisance to kind of get people out of cover. Well, with this gunpowder upgrade, uh, it actually becomes deadly, you know, kind of like the turret, but it flies. So, Oh, um, that sounds tasty. That, well, yeah. <laughs> you, you, so you throw out a turret, and then you throw out your, your drone, and then you land down some firepower. I mean, you're going to mow through some stuff. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to try that out. That's going to be definitely epic. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. We're going to gonna throw down a turret and put up a drone and just wait, lay some waste. <laughs> Yes, looking forward to it. All right, so we have a now that 
Eve Online, the blackout has gone into place. You mm-hmm. you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, the notes I have were pre blackout. The blackout went in effect the twelfth. So basically, how the blackout now works is when you go into Nullsec. Um, in the chat window, it, it used to list everybody that was in there, and now when you're rolling through Nullsec, you, you don't know who's out there until they say something, and then it'll say, oh, so-and-so said this. Now, I think it's kind of a great idea to kind of leave it blacked out. You know, I mean, the story behind it is, you know, the drifters have caused such uh, infrastructure damage to the to the comm relays that... Um, they're having to, you know, uh, only the important chatter is getting through. So um, now you have this blackout. So players are still not happy about it. But if you're like me in high sec, it, it doesn't really affect any of that. But the um, low sec people are not happy. People are threatening to leave. <laughs> and some of these guys have just got years into it. They um, won't leave. They won't leave. No, no. But, you know, everyone is saying, oh, this is going to spell the end to Eve. And I'm like, well, maybe not an end, but maybe a um, new, refinement. New maybe beginning. It's be a re- you know, yeah. Maybe. It's a new beginning. Because now, so you had all these, and, and you, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the way I see it. You had all these corporations companies in there and they were all fighting each other for resources now they've got a common enemy they have to Mm -hmm. come together to fight that enemy to get these things all back into place Mm -hmm. so it's going to make some new alliances it's going to do some things like that and people that normally wouldn't talk to each other have anything to do with each other except for maybe fighting over resources they're going to have to come together and do something about what's going on there if they want to fix the situation True, that or they'll steal it in the Eve way, you know. It's, it's, there's, I, I'm going to send you some links of the greatest upsets in Eve where it's corporate, corporate espionage, you know, that stuff like best. that. You know, people implant themselves into this corporation, work their way up the chain, and overnight everything's gone. Gone. You oh, know? man. Um, yeah, so, I mean, if you can think it, you can usually do it in Eve. So, but <laughs> my thing is, it's like, you know. Let's stop complaining. Uh oh. What's up? Dang it! Kick me out again. So <laughs> my um, thing is is uh, of um, Discord. So right. let me know when I'm you're back, back in. in. All right, you're no, back I'm in. Back into Discord. Yeah. All right. So uh, hopefully you didn't miss anything there, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. So yeah, my thing is it's like let's just stop complaining about it, adapt and overcome, and enjoy what they what they're doing with the game. You know. Uh, you obviously like it up to this point let's not let just a communications delay or a blackout effect um yeah i mean you're gonna have to change your play style but i mean that's with every game that evolves um wow is the same way any game that i've played that's online that it has to evolve it's a living breathing universe right so it's it is gotta it's gotta live it's gotta change so yeah, and I, I'm gonna. Usual, I'm keeping an eye on it. So know, I'm calling this the Great Cleansing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So, all right. So you had a little note here about some Hearthstone stuff going on. Sure. So, um, what was it? Mid this mid time this week, um, they basically released a Tavern Brawl, which is kind of like a raid. There's eight bosses, and it's called uh, Black Mountain Crash. So basically, uh, they have this Iridar ship, and it crashes in the Black Rock Mountain, and um, you're given uh, some heroes to choose from, like Dr. Boom and all that. That's who I chose. Um, I recorded some videos. I put the first one up. I got to down, I downed three of eight in that video there's one more where i attempted again and and still didn't get it the last video i finally after 50 some attempts i finally figured it out but it's good so every week it's gonna evolve into a different so this was just the first week of it so um more to come on it but it is basically the tavern brawl has been around for a while it's just a challenge mode type thing Uh, and it's short in duration so it comes and it goes but, uh, yeah, I, I finally got through it. And some of the bosses, if you play WoW, you'll recognize it, like the Omnitron defense system. 
Archimedes, uh, Gar, and all of these guys are old bosses from different raids. Gar, Jeez. yeah, yeah, he's he was a pain in the he was a pain man. <laughs> he he, uh, he throws out these these rock things and every turn he does damage to them well if they after their five health when they die they lob a fireball and as many of them on the board the more damage each one does exponentially so it's more of a sustaining game so you know take an armor up so get stuff in there that you know has a death rattle like so upon death it gives you six armor so i'm you know, throwing these cards out <laughs> that that i know will die but when they die they're given the armor Gotcha. And with Dr. Boom, I'm um, his special ability is spend one gem, shuffle five card or uh, two bombs into the deck that do five damage. So it's more of sustaining yourself and keeping yourself up because once those um, guys explode, he'll cast more and <laughs> and whittle them down. So you're just okay. Keep going, keep going. Heal, you know. Build up armor. Get more bombs in there. And you're like, I know these. I know he's got bombs in there. I know he's got bombs. Like if you watch some <laughs> of the videos, I'm like, I got five health. And I'm like, I've got nothing to go on. I'm I'm low on cards. So it's like, yeah, I know he's drawn a bomb, and like three of them pop out in a row, and then I win the round. But it's <laughs> it's sustaining yourself. Yeah, so my thing I, is I watched. Armor up. I watched so, your frustration. Yeah. So I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, it, oh, was, yeah. it was fun. I, I'm going to post the other ones probably a little bit later, but um, eventually I do beat it. So you get a, car, a card back on it, some packs. And some one of the packs doesn't, it's from the new expansion that isn't out yet. So it's just sitting there waiting for August to come around before I open it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah I haven't been in Arstone for a long time. So well, I'm, you should I'm try not... it. It's, uh, it's oh, fun because. Well, too the, far you know, out of it. Well, the thing is, is you, you, you're starting off with a deck. It's already pre-constructed, so, you know, it's not well, like, yeah. oh, i got to pull my other cards, so. Yeah, that might not be too bad. The Tavern Brawl might not be too bad, but, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so, think, talking about games to try, we have uh, game releases for the upcoming week, and the really the only game that uh, seemed to be of any interest, for me anyways, was Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order. It comes out July 19th mm -hmm. on the Switch. I really enjoyed uh, the first two of those. I'm excited and apprehensive about this one because we haven't seen a lot of footage. Mm -hmm. uh, if it plays anything oh, yeah. like Diablo with all the you know Marvel characters, it should be still good, but I, I don't know. I'm going to wait for reviews on this one for sure. Yeah. Other than that, there really wasn't anything... That came out, unless you want to talk about the Great Toilet Simulator game, a, a <laughs> realistic restroom visiting simulator. That's what they put in their description. Uh, and it comes out on July 19th. Uh, too bad this so, wasn't out sooner. It might have saved yeah. Dr. Disrespect from going into E3 bathroom. You sure that. You sure that. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, I but... couldn't resist. It's couldn't okay. Resist. okay. Everyone's thrown shade his way to you know. Uh, that was known better. That was low hanging fruit, but that yes. is a real game coming out on July 9th. I'm not making that up. <laughs> okay, well, you know, uh, I don't know if that's one I want to try out. I'm sure it's a, one of those Steam ones, isn't it? It's a PC game. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Probably exactly. really after Steam or something. Yeah, I was reading a, the description past what I put down in here, and it was like. Uh, welcome to the party where you're going to be given lots of drinks and the more drinks you drink the more you're going to want to visit the bathroom and so that's what the whole game oh. was about I'm like oh my gosh I don't even want to know <laughs> don't even want to know but yeah. yeah maybe if it goes on sale for two bucks you can do it and then record something <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. no no yeah. it's not worth it not worth no, it no. So no, I'm uh, still uh, waiting to get a hold of Tropico Six. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this video is going to release on Monday, uh, July fifteenth. I've got a video that I'm going to release on Tuesday. It's going to be Judgment. I'm doing a let's play on the Judgment, the Yakuza spinoff game. You got anything mm -hmm. in the pipeline? Uh, probably another Hearthstone because I got two that, that are sitting there waiting. So, okay. So, so one one is me bashing my head trying to figure it out, and then the third one is me actually beating it. Even though I had beat it offline, 
And I was like, because I, I was doing some warm ups, so, and I was like, well, all of a sudden I beat him, and I'm like, well, damn it, I don't, I'm not recording, so I've got to redo this. So <laughs> I start, and then it's like I completely, I, I drew a bad hand on Gar, so I'm like, okay, damn it, let's just redo it real quick, and then I, I do get through it. But yeah, that first draw on Gar kind of screwed me from <laughs> the get go. So yeah. other than Hearthstone, you either draw good or you draw bad. <laughs> That's with any card game, right? It all yeah. depends on the how the cards get put in your hand and yeah. what you can use. <laughs> yep. So um, I'm going to be streaming Wednesday. Uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm streaming. It might be the Legends of Hero Trials of Cold Steel again. Trails of Cold Steel. I always say Trials. Trails of Cold Steel. And we've got to get Oz here streaming, but we haven't got that set up yet. We yeah, will. we're working on it. We're working on it. But so, I don't know what I'm going to stream yet. I, I really haven't found my niche. So, um, my yeah. division one, my division stuff was getting some views, and it's kind of tapered off. Excuse me. So I, I don't know. I got to find a niche. Well, if you do the division, and I'm free that night, I can always jump in with you. Uh, we got to get me to thirty though. So. Um, yeah, but that that's always fun. I go through I go through there, absorb all of the bullets, and you just run Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting back playing support. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he needs a heal. Yeah, there you go, boom, and then I duck yeah. and shoot, play sniper in the back. So, but now my thing is is like, you know, once this title update five is is out, we can definitely then pug some um, of the raids. So that'll be fun. I mean, of course, there's WoW, and then I got to pick up um, Final Fantasy, and then we, we have to do the misadventures of Static and Oz. <laughs> In Final Fantasy. Uh, I, I did record my Pandaria adventures, but that turned out to be two hours. I'm like, do I really want to post a two-hour video of me leveling from 1 to 17? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it's a great story, but it's like, uh, do you really want to watch two hours of that? Uh, I mean, I could, we could always I mean, I, save it. Yeah, I have it saved. I have the raw footage saved. I just got to figure out, like, do we want to release it or do we just pick up where we left off? Hey, this is what we've done to this point. We're now in Duskwood, you know, or whatever. And yeah. wherever I, we left off, I can't remember now. Yeah, it was, Dus it was Duskwood. It was yeah, Duskwood. Duskwood. So, and of course, I look like a ninja instead of a monk, which drives me nuts. <laughs> Because of, of heirloom, gear. Heirloom, heirloom gear, heirloom gear, heirloom gear. I I've got the gaudy heir, heirloom gear, so uh, you got the old hunter gaudy stuff. With I know big blades coming off of the shoulder. I did it intentionally too because I wanted yeah. that bright red stuff, man. Just like, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> I'm a yeah. hunter, but I'm I'm not hiding very well. <laughs> well. Right now, like on my main, my warlock, I am plowing through the story in the new area, Nazir, however you say it, the underwater area that Ashar parted the seas and uh, working on that. And that's where the whistle is that we were talking about the other day. Yeah, yeah. So I did use my 110 token and I started another hunter. I saw that. Um, I saw that. For some... I hunter is like the only class I really enjoy playing in that game and I don't know why. I've tried uh, them it, all. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got Paladin that's up there. I've got a, uh, I've got a Demon Hunter that might be close to your level. Um, I think I made one fifteen, one sixteen today. Yeah, I think my Demon Hunter is around that level. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to check, but I've got like everything, and it, you know, I got a Death Knight and all that stuff. But it's like, I enjoy being a warlock. I, I enjoy that because I'm pretty much self-sustaining. I'm like, oh, I don't. No one wants to run with me. I cast my, you know, cast blue, the the big tanky demon, or uh, the demon, and then I go, you know. So it's like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> That's kind of like me. I just throw my pet out there and just yeah. wreak havoc. I got my heal stones and my health stones, and then I can heal my pet. So it's like, all right. <laughs> I was. Uh doing quests that were saying multiple people should be joining it should be a group and mm -hmm. i would go in and it'd be like three elites my level and i would destroy them so it's like you know why do i yeah. need anybody else i don't well, know eh, you know for probably maybe a mage or a priest who's not quite running shadow i guess i don't know i mean uh, if you're running solo you should be in shadow 
but if um i don't know i mean back in the day those are really hard like you needed at least oh, one yeah. other person nowadays it's like oh well <laughs> let me just pop some get skills good then i guess because it's like ah, go get them blue and then it's <laughs> like all right do stuff uh, it's dead go loot it so i don't know i don't know i i I don't know anymore. It, it, it's yeah. become easy is my complaint, you know? Like, I enjoy the story. I like playing through it. I just wish things still took a little bit of skill. Not just click four or five buttons and then be, you know... Well, you still got to know when to click the buttons. There's still I mean, that. But, you know, it's... Yeah, so, you know, but it's not as much as it used to be where, like... Oh, well, no. You know, like, if you were, if you were a... Uh, um, if you were a Destruction Warlock, it was always like this, 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 this... But if you were affliction, then it was like, well, are these dots up? If yes, follow the chart. Do this. If no, go back and cast these dots. Then go continue on. And anymore, it's like, well, if I do this, my dots reset anyway, so I can do whatever I want. I don't, I don't know. It, it's just the flow charts. Were, oh, were I, I'm fun. with you. It used to be like with the hunter, you had four or so traps and you would use them in different scenarios the mm -hmm. only time i use my ice trap which is the only trap i have now is when i'm soloing because yeah. i know if i put it down in a group somebody's going to hit that dang thing and it's not going to yep. matter and i did some dungeons and the warrior just it's it's like final fantasy all over again because they do this in final fantasy too they run through like the first three rooms gather everything up and we just aoe it down yeah, and then do that again till we get to the boss, and then it's like, okay, well, there's, what, what am I gonna put my ice trap on? Nothing, because it's it's like a useless thing on my hot bar right now. Oh, well, I mean, the ice trap was always good, you know, back when raiding was hard, and you had back when it was hard. <laughs> back when it was hard, and you had to control everything. Your pulls, you know, if you had two guys that were really hard, but they were really close together. You know, ice trap him, you know, do some crowd control and get that guy, you know, so. Yep, but they don't do that anymore. It's like. Uh, DC is kind of a, an old uh, talent that people, you know, miss. You know, like I used to have to CC back in the day. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just not what it used to be. Like yeah. I said, I, I don't know. We went over my complaints with how easy gaming's got and how it went from super hard EverQuest to where you know wow is now and it's like i miss the old days you know? which surprises me that you don't play games like dark souls and those more because those games will challenge you you know everyone says why don't you play dark souls i'm like i don't know i just really haven't ever got into it i need to get into it again but maybe maybe i'll do some videos on that maybe my misadventures in that <laughs> <laughs> well let me know if you do any of that because i can come in and help you with some bosses and stuff okay because they do have like a summoning feature and uh, I think I, depending on which one you play, I have characters on PC that can probably come in and help. Okay. Sounds good. So, all right. But I think that's enough of us rambling, unless you got anything else. No, I don't think I have anything else. All right. So um, and that that's it for today. Then till next video, take care. Bye-bye now. Static Buzz. And Oz. We're out. Bye. Ta take care, everybody. See ya.